Welcome back. If today is your first time of visiting my YouTube channel, please don't forget to click the like and subscribe button for you to get latest updates. Alright, today we'll be talking about box model. What box model is and how important box model is to your HTML and CSS that you write and how box model can help you to create a pixel perfect design. So let's move straight forward to box model. So what is box model? Box model is how um, your browser render each and every HTML element in a box. So let me show you what I mean. And I will show you a presentation in CSS, right? How CSS um, represent this box model. And there are four important properties that we'll be talking about while talking about box model. So let's come to our browser. Let's inspect this HTML element. This is an 81 HTML element and this HTML element gets to be represented in a box um, way. So let me show you what that looks like in your code. So now, if you look at this HTML element, this is the HTML element we have, which is an adding one element. And, and if you look at this area, you get to see that your CSS, um, your styles is being shown here, right? How your padding, your border, and the margin is. So there are four important properties of box model. The first one is the content area. What is a content area? Content area is the text that you, that you have in between your H1 tag, right? So any text or any content that you have in between your HTML element is called a content area. Be it a text, be it image, be it any other thing that you are representing in between that your HTML element is called the content area. And the content area from this CSS representation, this box model representation of your element, this is the content area. And you can see the content area is taking the full width of the container. Why is it that way? Okay, uh, if you've been following my video tutorial, I talked about HTML and what block and uh, inline level element is. And we said block level element takes 100% of its container, right? So an um, HTML element 81 is a block level element which takes 100% of the uh, um, the container and always starts on a new line. Why inline level element, it, it wraps itself, like it forces each and every item to be on one line. So that's the reason why you're seeing that this uh, content is looking as if it's spanning through the full width of the container. So after talking about the content, um, the content area, the next thing we'll be talking about is called padding, right? I would like to talk about um, border so that I'll use border to like show you like a clear representation of what padding is. So I'll skip padding now and talk about border, then we'll now come back to um, um, padding. So border, right? As you can see, border is the uttermost part of your content area. So this is your content area. Just immediately after your content area, you get to see a cutting edge, like an edge around your content area is called your border. So I will apply a border properties. We have, CSS have a border property. We'll be talking about CSS properties just after this video in the next video. So don't forget to click the like and subscribe button so that you get to see how we we'll talk treat border and um, other CSS properties. So I'll apply, um, border here and border takes um three parameters there are different ways you can do this right i'm just showing the short uh, hand method of writing the border the first is the width of the border right the the thickness of the border allow me to say thickness rather the thickness of the border and it's represented in pixel right so i would say let's give our border to pixel and the second is the style or the type of the border you want to apply. Is it a solid border, a dashed border, or circle, depending on the kind of border you want to apply. So I'll say this border is a solid border, right? And the last property is called the border color, right? The border color. So what color do you want the border to be? As you can see, the border is already showing, right? Which is the line around the content area, right? So it's already showing. Now I'll say, let me give you the color red, right? As you can see, the color is now red. So don't forget, anytime you have um, a pixel representation here of the width of how thick the border would be, this affects the width and the height of a container. So let me explain. I will increase the border to, let's say, 20, right? As you can see, 20 now. Now, if you over on this your HTML element, you see the representation in width and height. The H1 
as you can see there's a small um, tube tip explaining what this guy is right so you see that the the width is 1424 pixel while the height is 77 pixel that is because we have like a 20 pixel value of our border so let's just note this i will reduce the border to one pixel and let's check the value again to see right so i will now come here and reduce the border to one pixel right and and now our border is one pixel so let's over on our html element as you can see now the height of the html element is now 39 pixel you see how the border affects the height and also the width of whatever container or whatever HTML element you have. So be careful when you're applying border and when you're trying to calculate the width and height of a particular HTML element. Don't forget to calculate both the border, the margin, and the padding, right? And also the content area height. Depend that content area, if it is a text content area, um, that will be the line height. The line height will affect your height of that container. So we'll talk about line height when we're talking about how you can style HTML and CSS um, HTML elements like the text representation. Okay, so now let's um, move to the next thing, which is called padding, right? So padding is the guy here. Padding is the area between your content and your your border, right? The space in between your border and your content area is called padding. So the reason that now you get to see the reason why I had to talk about border before talking about padding. So let's apply padding. Padding is a CSS property. We'll talk about padding in the next video. So don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. So padding takes um, four value, right? The top, right, bottom, and left area of, um, of that HTML element. So you can decide to put padding at the top or by the left or the right and the bottom. So I'll just use one value to represent them, which is like a short arm, a short, uh, arm of writing padding. Right. So I will say, let the padding be 20 pixels, right? As you can see, automatically it adds a space. You see that light gray box, light gray space in between the border and the content area. That is the padding that we just applied. And if you come to your box model representation in CSS, you notice that this padding here is now 20 pixels because we applied 20 pixels of padding to that particular HTML element. And the padding, just like we explained, is the space between the content area and your border right so you see it's 20 pixels so let's reduce the value just be looking at this right so that you get to see how the value reduce uh, reduces so let's reduce the value and you can see as we are reducing you know, we have now like six um, pixel padding and here we have six pixel padding representation of your um of your html how it is shown in your html so the board your your padding is the space in between your content area and your border so padding is the space in between your content area and your border so the last um css properties that is style to box model that we'll be talking about is called your margin margin right margin so margin what is margin margin is the space between your html element um border line and any other item beside it above it or close to it right or below it so let's as you can see, by default, HTML element heading one have a default um, margin applied to it. So let me show you the default style. These are the default style. And as you can see, we have a margin here. Style to So we see margin block start, margin block end, margin block inline start, margin block inline end, right? These are the property that is affecting this, your margin. As you can see, you see like a light, will I say it's like a, Cockroach, uh, cockroach gray color at the top and bottom because they apply it to the top and bottom of that particular HTML element. So let's apply my margin property to this HTML element and set it to zero. You see that the space in between the top of the browser and the HTML element itself has now, has now reduced because we've set it to zero. So let's set it to, let's say, 50 pixel, right? As you can see, the top, so just like padding that I explained that you can have, you can apply it to the top, bottom, left, and right corner. Same thing applicable to margin, right? You can apply it to top, left, right corner. I will show you how to do that, but I'm just using a shorthand method of doing that. So I'm telling the CSS that it should apply space between the content area of that HTML element, which is the browser window, 
currently because that's the only HTML element we have and the HTML element itself. So the space between the HTML element and the content area, the um, surrounding area, right? So that's what we call padding. So if you want to like do for top left, um, bottom and right. So the first value is for the top, the second value is for the right. So let's say 20 pixel. While the third value is for the bottom, let's say 10 pixel. Then the last value is for the left. Uh, let's call it, let's say 15 pixel. So you see that looking at this, your box media representation here, you see that the top has 50 pixel, just like we said, the first value is for the top. The second one is for the right, which is 20 pixel. The third one is for the bottom, which is 10 pixel. While the last one is for the left hand side, which is 15 pixel, right? Though those value are what we have here in our margin uh, property, right? So this is how you get to calculate the width of any HTML element. For you to calculate the width of the HTML element now, since we've applied a um, one pixel uh, border, six pixel padding, and we have 20 by 20, 20 uh, 50, 20, 10, 15 pixel applied to the HTML element. For you to be able to calculate the height or the width of this HTML element, you have to add the 50 pixel, the border, which is one pixel, the six pixel, and also the value for the content area will give you the total height or the width of that particular HTML element. So don't forget, when you're talking about box model, you must mention the content area, the border, the padding, and the margin of that HTML element. That will help you to know how to calculate how wide or how high your HTML element is. And with this knowledge, you can write, actually design a website, a pixel perfect uh, representation of a website. Let's say a designer um, represents the website they want to you to develop, they've designed it using Figma or using Sketch or Adobe XD. They will now give you, they have like a specified uh, with height, padding margin, border area, and stuff like that. So for you to actually represent it just like the way the designer did on the design, you need to understand what box model is. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button for the next video where we'll be talking about some of the CSS, the most important CSS property in HTML and CSS uh, um, course. So don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. See you in the next video. And if you have any question, you can drop down, drop a comment down below. I will attend to your comment. Thank you very much for watching. See you next.